Okay, so I just saw the Shazam trailer. iPhone quality again, check that, that's my house. Look at that, the house almost done. I need to do a house tour for you guys. Look at this, look at this bookshelf here. All my little knickknacks and stuff. I need to do a house tour video. Shazam looks amazing, oh my God, dude. Okay, DC, thank you. Warner Brothers, thank you so much. This is how you, see, this is how you make a video with, this is how you make a movie with Shazam. The trailer looks awesome, man. He's like a little kid that suddenly gains the powers of Superman. And it's just like, Shazam! Dude, it's like, dude, it's, it's the cool, man, man, it's the coolest thing. Okay, um, oh my God, we gotta take a breath. All right, um, here's what I want to see. All right, because here's what people, here's what people want to see from the Shazam movie. All right, here's what people want to see from the Shazam movie. They, they basically want to see a movie where somewhere along the line, we end up getting the version of Shazam, who's basically like the one from Justice League, like the Justice League cartoon show, where like he ends up facing off against Superman, and he's like, you guys, do, you guys don't know what it means to be heroes. Like, you guys have forgotten what it means to be a superhero. Because like, here's, here's a, so here's a cool thing about Billy Batson. All right, here's a cool thing about Billy Batson's character about Shazam. He brings in a childlike perspective of superheroes, right? But like from the babes of mouths or from the mouths of babes come truth. Like it's it's one of those things where like he would look at superheroes and say like, you guys are supposed to be the good guys. Like your moral compass isn't supposed to be questionable. You're not supposed like Batman's the only one who's supposed to be questionable because he's Batman. He's just like a giant grump that beats up people in the middle of the night. But like Superman, you're supposed to be the good guy. Wonder Woman, you're pretty badass, so you're cool. We can hang out and you know do it like I mean those, those are those are like all those things that like Shazam should be like you know like like throwing out there but I think it'd be so cool because it would almost be like Shazam's a stand-in for the fan base and and like the in the, the comic book movies and the DC movies because like Shazam would be like you guys you guys are superheroes and people would be like yeah they're, they're kind of not like they're they're just like emo kids they're, they're like they're like they're like uh, what's it Dick Grayson from the Teen Titans trailer I'm so misunderstood by the world F Batman <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so grumpy and dark and just emo and you know I'm you know I, I hang out with the Teen Titans because it's less conformist than the Justice League. Like I mean that's like like people don't want to see that version of superheroes. And Shazam was never that way. Like if you if you go back and you look at the old Shazam comics, I mean well it kind of depends on what era you're talking about. Not even really what era you're talking about. I mean, you can even go back to like like Wiz Comics number two when he first showed up. I assume you can go back that far and actually read them. You can get your hands on them. Let me tell you something. If you have your, if you're if you have in your possession Wiz Comics number two, you need to look at selling that shit. Like I'm, I'm just saying, because I mean that thing's gonna be worth a fortune when that movie when that movie drops. But like you go back and you look at the old Golden Age comics. You look at like the 1950s, 60s, uh, even in the 70s. Not so much the 60s. Probably from like the 1940s and 50s. Shazam was basically. I mean, like he killed people, but so did Superman and like Batman. So I mean, like like he was. But more often than not, like, Billy Batson brought in a kind of, like, childlike interest to the superhero community. That's the reason why Shazam outsold Superman. A lot of you guys who don't know this, all right, this is a little, little bit of a tidbit, like, a little bit of a fact here. Shazam was more popular than Superman. And I don't mean, like, a little more popular. I mean, like, very popular. It was, it was crazy. So Superman shows up, right? You got, like, you, you, you have the whole Superman mythos, all right? Jerry Siegel, Joe Schuster, Thoreau Superman, and then uh, the, the president of Fawcett Publications, which was just a news publication at the time, goes to Bill Parker and C.C. Beck and he says, give me Superman without Superman. So they basically create like Captain Marvel. And that's what he was called back then. He was Captain Marvel. And so like, like from there, like dude, he, he hit the stands and it was like, bam, he sold like gangbusters. Dude, he blew Superman out of the water. He could fly before Superman did. He had his first, uh, first radio show before Superman. I mean, he was out selling the Man of Steel by like a margin of two to one. It was, it was insane how popular he was. Was. I want to say that at his peak, he was selling something like 500,000 issues, like as his comics were being sold. So DC sued Fawcett, and that's how they, that's how you managed to get. If DC hadn't sued Fawcett, like Super, like Shazam would be the character, not Superman. Like Shazam would be the face of the comic book industry, not not Superman. But still, um, like going forward into like the future of, of comics, especially when you're talking about how how basically he disappeared off the radar for like 10 years, 15 years, something like that, and then came back in the 1970s, you were talking about a very childlike exuberance that was brought to the superhero community. And people loved that about Shazam because he was one part serious, one part funny. And like dealing with all the struggles that like teenage kids deal with and, and like readers sitting down and reading stories, it's like, well, why doesn't Shazam just grab that bully and like throw him into the sun? Like, I mean, it's, he's a bully. The world would be better off without him. Nobody will remember that he's gone because nobody cares about him in the first place since him being a bully. But like, like you would read that and you'd say, why doesn't he just do that? But then like he doesn't because there's other ways to solve your problems. So it was like the moral compass thrown into the comic book story. And and, and it was it was awesome the way that it was done. But this trailer looks like it's gonna be fun. Like I look at, I, I don't feel like I'm gonna sit down 
and watch a movie where it's like emo Superman, right? Like, man, I'm just so emo. I don't, I don't, I'm the man of steel. I've basically got godly powers, but I don't know what I want to do with my life. Like, I mean, I, I you know, like, I don't, I don't want to sit around, you know, just, you know, Superman crying those sad little tears. I don't want to see that. All right, I want to see Superman where he's just like, yeah, man, I got all this figured out, man. And I'm nailing Lois Lane. Like, like that's the Superman that I want to see. Like, that's the version that I want to see. And so, so I feel like Shazam is going to be like, like it's going to be fun and it's going to be interesting and it's going to be enjoyable. Like, it's it's going to be a fun movie. Like, it's just going to be cool things that happen and interesting things that take place. And that's important because the biggest problem that, that Warner Brothers has had with their comic book movies up to this point, if they've all been like so dark and so just so like melancholy, like you sit down and it's like, okay, so this is just like a like a giant stent into like depression. Like, this is a this is a pretty sad thing. Like, damn, like every movie feels like a Batman movie. Like every movie feels like, you know, Superman featuring Batman somewhere in the background, which is why everything's so sad. And then it's like Aquaman featuring Batman in the background. By the way, Black Manta looks up Mary's balls. Like I'm just I'm just saying, like like I want to like I want to see this looks like it's gonna be fun and it's gonna be interesting and it's gonna be enjoyable. If it's okay, so here's how here's how it feels. It feels like it's one part new 52 Shazam, one part Shazam Power of Hope. That's what it feels like. It feels like it's going to be like those two things combined together, which is going to be kind of cool. Now, here's here's what I'm also kind of hoping they want. I wonder if they're going to throw it in. So back in the early 90s with the Shazam solo series, the last one he had before they put him in the backup feature in the new 52, um, what we ended up finding out is that when Billy Batson turns into Shazam, he's not turning into just a regular guy. He's turning into how he imagines his father looks like. And so it's just like, it's like, that's like the saddest thing ever. But I wonder if they're gonna go into that. Like if they're gonna explain that whole thing. Ah, uh, yeah, the trailer looks amazing, balls. Like it looks, it looks super good. Um, I'm really, really excited. And I really hope this is the new tone that DC is going for. Like I really hope it's the new direction they're going in. Creating movies that feel like superhero movies and don't necessarily feel like a reflection of the real world, right? I mean, I don't really want to see a reflection of the real world. I mean, I want to see it in so far as like locations and stuff, but I want to, like when I go to see a superhero movie, I want to leave the world behind, you know? If I wanted the world to go with me, then like I would just, you know, I mean, I don't know what I would do instead, but like you guys understand what I'm saying. Like it's, 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 it's cool. Like it's, it's really exciting and it's, and it's really, really interesting. So, I mean, let me know what you guys think because I'm sure you guys are just as excited as I am. Cause I mean, dude, I was looking, I was, dude, I was watching that. Okay. I was watching that trailer and I was, man, I was waiting for it. I was waiting for it. Like I was, I was waiting for the thing where she's like, Shazam! Like, oh dude, I was waiting, I was waiting for that. And I was like, man, it's going to be so bad. Oh, and then like when he hit the kids with the, with the dude's arm thing, with a stick thing, I was just like, man, you're getting really bad. I'm going to shut him bullish, man. Like I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for that to happen. Like, I'm, 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 man, I'm waiting for this movie. Dude, that, that trailer, that trailer was boss. That, that, that trailer looks so beast. Um, oh my god, Mark Strong? I don't even know what the name of the villain is that he plays. I was hoping to see The Rock, right? Like, I mean, come on, y'all. Now, let's be honest, y'all. I was kind of hoping to see The Rock, right? I was hoping to see Dwayne Johnson when he shows up. He's like, I'm Black Adam, you know? Bam! And they're like, they start fighting, you know, and, and just like, they start beating the hell out of each other. I, I thought that's what we were going to see, right? Because I want to see, like, Comdoc. I want to see all that stuff. Like, I mean, I'll be honest, this makes me excited for a lot of different things. Like, it makes me excited for Shazam fighting Superman. Let me tell you something, man, that, like, it'll be DC's chance to correct Batman versus Superman, right? Like, like I mean, they, they can't undo screwing the pooch on Batman v Superman. I mean, there's no way to fix that. I mean, yeah, cat's out of the bag on that one. But if this movie does as well as I, as I hope it will and as I think it will, then, like, Shazam versus Superman is going to be, like, a badass moment. Like, it's going to be absolutely beast. Because people are going to be like, so who would win? Uh, between these two guys who basically have the same powers, but one uses magic. Like, like, who would win between them, you know, with identical abilities? Like, I don't know. Somebody just, like, flip a coin, pick one, and that's the one that wins. So, so I think it would be kind of cool, like, with this whole, this whole, you know, that, that, that whole thing. But I, I feel like this will be the tone going forward. See, Wonder Woman needed to be a little bit dark. It needed to be a little bit dark and a little hardcore. Because she's, dude, Wonder Woman is a badass. Dude, in the comics, oh my god, dude, she is, she is hardcore. Dude, okay, there's this great story called Hikatea, where, where, well, I've, I've talked about Hikatea before, but basically what happens in that story is, like, a chick escapes, uh, escapes Gotham City after killing some criminals and, like, seeks refuge with Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman gives it to her, um, and then, like, Wonder Woman doesn't know this girl escaped Gotham after killing people, so Batman shows up on Wonder Woman's doorstep and is like, hey, so you need to hand that girl over. And Wonder Woman's like, nope, 
I'm not giving you anything. He's like, well, I'm Batman. She's like, I don't give a damn. She beat the hell out of him and threw it out of his ass. She was like, get out of here. The next time you come back here, man, I'm, I'm, I'm break my foot off in your ass, Batman. It was hilarious. <laughs> it was hilarious. Infinite Crisis, she beat the hell out of Superman. Dude, like, like Maxwell Lord, like, seized control of Superman and, like, was controlling his mind. And Wonder Woman rolled up her sleeve. She's like, all right, man, time to get to it. And, dude, man, man, she beat on him like a side of beef. It was the funniest thing. You see, she's like, boom, boom, boom. Dude, she was beating, she was beating, oh, shit, I'm beating for my language, beating the crap out of him. She was beating the absolute, absolute car out of him. I'm excited. I'm sorry if I'm so excited, people. But it is a very exciting time because this movie looks like it's going to be amazing. It's going to look like, it looks like the first real superhero movie that DC is making, which, or what Warner Brothers is making, which I'm so glad to see. So like, dude, this, this movie looks, it looks beast. It looks amazeballs. I was a little unsure about Zachary Levi when I saw him wearing like the, the muscle suit, but he looks badass. Like Zachary Levi looks pretty awesome as, as Shazam. I mean, it's, it, it, God, it looks like it's going to be young and fun and refreshing. And that's, that's, that's really what we need, right? Like we don't need every angsty 60, 16-year-old teenager kid ever won a brother superhero movie. We need like, hey, let's have fun with this because it's superheroes and like who the hell goes to watch superhero movies to be pissed off all the time. With that being said, guys, uh, we're going to bring this video to an end. I'm excited. I know you guys are excited. Post down in the comments. Let me know what you guys think and I will catch you all later. Peace.